Many people think Facebook ads are now completely dead and I'm here to tell you today and show you today that that is certainly not the case in 2022, moving into 2023 as well. Just before we jump into today's video, if you're new around here, my name is Patch. I upload e-com videos related to Google ads uh, and obviously today Facebook ads as well. Now there's no denying that my main advertising platform is Google. I'm sure if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know the sort of numbers we are currently doing with Google ads. But over the last couple of months, Facebook ads has also started to take off again massively for me. Now, I have a few things in this video. I'm going to be showing you how I've achieved $50,000 in revenue on a single website in the last 30 days just using Facebook ads. I'm gonna be breaking down the campaign structure I use, essential things you need to include. It is a very uncomplicated process, so make sure you watch this entire video. If you are currently advertising on Facebook or if you're thinking about going to Facebook and testing some ads. Now very quickly, I just wanna mention I do own a Google Ads agency, so if you are struggling with Google Ads, drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Links to those are down below. We help manage and grow Google accounts for e-commerce websites, so if you are interested Interested, just hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. But anyway, let's jump into the video. So as I mentioned earlier, $50,000 in revenue in the last 30 days or so on just one of my websites using Facebook ads alone or meta ads, whatever you want to call them now. Now, just before I break down my structure here, I'm just going to go through a few essentials you need to make sure you have in place before either starting Facebook from fresh if you've never used Facebook before or if you've used Facebook in the past and you want to come back and use Facebook again, make sure you have these things in place. Now, the first being UTM tracking. Now, this is an essential piece of code essentially that you guys want to add into every single ad you make on Facebook. It will allow you to track your conversion data in more detail and with more accuracy over on Google Analytics. So if you have got Google Analytics set up, you wanna make sure in this section here, in the URL parameters section, you copy and paste this piece of code here. I'll put this in the description of the video so you can just copy and paste it. This simple bit of code will allow you to track your campaign performance, your ad set performance, and even each individual ad's performance over on Google Analytics, giving you slightly better conversion tracking results and data. Because we all know since iOS 14, it has been very difficult to track all your data correctly on Facebook. Next up is a pretty obvious one, pixel installation. Now this is something that is very easy to do. You just do it through your Shopify admin account. Now I'm putting this down because you want to make sure it's installed correctly. Make sure you're doing test events, you know, test firing the add to cart event, test firing the checkout and then the purchase purchase event, making sure all of these things are working before you run Facebook ads, because if it's not working, you're going to get even worse tracking results. So another thing that's going to help with your conversion tracking. And the final essential thing I've added here is obviously a good Facebook page feedback score. If you are new, you don't have to worry about this, but a lot of people and a lot of dropshippers suffer from penalizations or complete Facebook bans from having a low customer feedback score on their Facebook pages. You can see the screenshots here of the two feedback scores I currently have. One of my sites is 3.5, one is at a three. Obviously these could be improved. Um, I'm sure you can see the green lines here, especially on the first one. It was sitting at around a 4.5 a month or so ago. But sadly in July on this particular website, I had some issues with shipping times and a lot of customers orders were delayed by a significant amount of time. So that is why I think this score has dropped here. And this score here, obviously I'm trying to increase and you can see it is slowly going up as well. So I'm not concerned about these pages dropping below the uh, threshold of I think it's a two but it's something you want to keep your eye on and obviously provide your customers with a good service and you won't ever have to worry about this being a problem with Facebook ads and just before we do jump into the structure I'm going to quickly show you the last 30 days of results on my USA website because that is the website in question in this video here is an image of the last seven days you can see some of the campaigns here obviously are increasing in the number of purchases per week which is obviously good we are scaling now just hopping into my ad account now for the US site this is obviously you can see last 30 days I'll quickly move my camera so you can see last 30 days here taking us up to 18th of September we've had a total of 398 purchases that have tracked obviously that's going to be quite a bit more because Facebook typically only tracks around 50 to 70 percent of the conversions I get for some people it's obviously different but I find mine track at about 50 to 70 percent which is still you know it's quite good Obviously the cost per result is quite high, but I'm selling high ticket products, which is why the ROAS is still anywhere from a 2.5 to a three. 
So after spending £19,300, it's generated me £47,840 in return, over $50,000 in tracked sales. This is probably more like 60, 70,000 if every single purchase from Facebook tracked. Obviously that's not the case, very annoying, but I'm showing you this to show you that Facebook ads are still performing really well and we'll break down some of my strategies and the campaign structures in a minute. But just to show you a bit more on my data, all of these uh, campaigns here are USA based campaigns, getting very decent CPMs here, obviously a lot of add to carts, decent cost per clicks, and you get the idea that they're doing very well for me at the moment and we're not in Q4 yet so I only expect these numbers to improve in the next month or two. So moving on to the first strategy which I've mentioned before it is the moving Google over to Facebook strategy. Now if you've got any good performing products over on Google there's no harm in trying to sell them on Facebook. And if they are doing well on Google, odds are they are going to do well on Facebook. Or should I say they're going to have a better chance of doing well on Facebook over a new product you add, for example, because it's already proven itself on another platform. If it's a high converting product on Google, it means you've done something right with the product page. So that's one less thing to worry about and one more reason as to why it could do well on Facebook. And don't worry about needing a fancy video ad when you're just testing. Simply start out with some high quality images, you'll be absolutely fine. If you find a product begins to work on Facebook, then you can start to cycle in some video ads and new pictures just as you scale. Because only scaling with one image is only going to get you so far. And the final point on this, with the rise of TikTok ads, more people are obviously moving and stressing about moving over to TikTok ads because they feel that's where all the customers are at the moment, leaving us people who are still advertising on Facebook a bigger piece of the pie, which is why less people on YouTube and Twitter and other areas like that are talking a lot more about TikTok ads and not much more about Facebook ads. I'm certainly not saying TikTok ads don't work. I know they do for some people, but this is a great opportunity to get back into Facebook because all of the attention is currently on TikTok ads. Okay, now moving over to the campaign structure that I follow. This is the exact structure on how I structure my campaigns. For the purpose of this, we're gonna just select a budget of $100 a day, campaign type CBO. I prefer CBO over ABO. I know some people might prefer ad set budget so they can uh, evenly split their budget across multiple ad sets. But for me, I find CBO just works a lot better, but you can always test ABO as well. Different things work for different people at the end of the day. Now in terms of how many products I put in one campaign, I usually allow one CBO to have one product in it. And then obviously that product is split into multiple ad sets with different audiences and things like that. To keep things simple, I don't start stacking different products into the same campaign. Just for me personally, I like to have them all separate in separate campaigns. And a typical rule I like to follow is two to three ad sets in your CBO for every hundred dollars or so of budget there is. So if you had a hundred dollar campaign, you would start with around two to three ad sets. Or if you were starting with a two hundred dollar a day campaign, you would have around five or six. You get the idea pretty simple. You don't want to have too many in there, otherwise they're not going to get enough budget each. And I find this amount a good amount of ad sets to have, so budget is evenly distributed between the few ad sets there are. And all I do in each ad set is just have a single audience interest, and that is not a look-alike audience. I'm not look I'm not using these at all at the moment. For me, they haven't worked last time I tried them. I'm definitely willing to try them again in the future. But for me, each ad set just has a single interest. And I advise broad interest as well, not an interest as that has a 10 to 50,000 audience size. I go into the multi, multi millions for these audience sizes. Keep it broad, but also keep it relevant as well. And in terms of the creative, I start with a single image ad or video ad in each ad set and that is the same image or video ad in this each ad set as well so if you have three ad sets in your campaign each of those will have the exact same ad and if you are starting at a decent daily budget you'll have a good idea pretty quickly if this product is going to start performing well on Facebook and at that point as you're scaling up the budget you'll then start to cycle in more ads such as video ads other image ads to keep refreshing those things your audience is seeing like I said if you're showing the same people the same ad over and over again the audience is going to fatigue very quickly they'll get sick of your ad it's not showing any new angles to your product and it will die out very quickly 
doing this will allow you to keep generating sales and essentially will keep your campaign alive for longer now when it comes to scaling because i'm doing this on quite a high level in terms of the amount of daily budget i'm spending i only increase my budget once a week i don't do the whole increase it by 20 percent thing on facebook i do it by larger increments each week for me it's every friday i'll analyze each ad set in each campaign any ad set that's performing poorly i'll simply turn it off and for every ad set i turn off i'll add a new ad set in with a brand new audience to test for that next week and the way i keep track of this is through a spreadsheet that a youtuber known as ben heath created a video on i'll share the spreadsheet in a minute you guys can pretty much make it yourself on google sheets he made a video about two years ago and it's a very good way to keep track of your facebook campaigns on your budget increases the performance on a weekly basis and it will ultimately allow you to make some data driven decisions when it comes to scaling your ads each week so here is an example of a spreadsheet that i've made each sort of table is two of the campaigns i'm running at the moment i'm obviously going to blow out the sensitive information but you get the idea here week one i've obviously got um, on the first table week one i had a daily budget of 360 pounds at the end of that week i'll enter my cost per result and then obviously the spreadsheet is going to calculate roughly how many sales that cost per result was generating me each week if i'm happy with the cost per result i then increase the budget i then increase it to 400 pounds again cost per result went down which was very good so the current week we are on i decided to do a big budget increase of 400 pounds to 550 and the same with this product here on the second table obviously a brand new cbo a brand new product for the first two weeks i kept the budget the same just because i was trying to monitor this in a bit more detail i was concerned the product might die quickly but you can see cost per purchase was doing very consistent results so in the third week the current week we are on i changed it from a 325 pound a day budget all the way up to a 460 pound budget and i like to add in this notes column here any changes i make when i change the budget i usually add in things like how many ad sets i added or how many ad sets i turned off which audiences i turned off and things like that just so you can refer back to it and know what changes you made other than the budget changes so a big shout out to ben he for this um, tip or strategy it's very very helpful i like doing these sort of things in an organized manner and using that simple spreadsheet structure has definitely allowed me to do that and manage my facebook ads more efficiently and the final point i want to make here is to scale your business successfully it is so so important to diversify your marketing channels relying on one is never going to end well i relied on facebook solely from 2018 to 2019 i got banned in 2019 and then my business completely crashed and burned because i had no other marketing channels bringing in sales so please make sure you are exploring other channels google facebook tiktok pinterest snapchat bing there are many more as well and finally make it a habit each week to test new cbos and new products testing two to three new products a week on facebook you're bound to find a winner at some stage so i hope you have found this video useful i've just broken down my facebook cbo strategy that i'm using at the moment to generate over fifty thousand dollars a month in revenue from facebook alone couple this with my google results my monthly sales are looking very very nice indeed if you need any help or got any questions feel free to comment or drop me a message on twitter or instagram and like i said at the start if you guys are interested in my google ads agency also drop me a message other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video